Welcome to the course on Genome Editing and Engineering module number 3 on recombination. Today we are going to learn about homologous and non-homologous recombination processes. From your previous classes, you have come to know that organisms are continuously exposed to a myriad of DNA damaging agents during its lifetime. You also now know that DNA damage are broadly of two types, the endogenous damage which is caused by reactive oxygen species which are derived from metabolic byproducts, then replication errors, DNA base mismatches and topoisomerase DNA complexes. The second type of DNA damage is the exogenous damage caused by radiation like UV, X-ray, gamma and hydrolysis, plant toxins and viruses. You know that if this DNA which is damaged is not repaired, it will impact health and also modulate certain disease states in various organisms. Luckily, there are robust DNA repair and damage bypass mechanisms which essentially protect the DNA by either removing or tolerating damage to ensure an overall survival of the organism. Certain genetic or metabolic diseases occur when these repair mechanisms fail for any reason which is an exception rather than an usual event. Whenever there is a DNA damage, the organisms respond to it at the cellular and molecular level by activating robust DNA damage response pathways or DDR pathways which physically remove or repair the damage in a substrate dependent manner. There are at least 5 major known DNA repair pathways which are active throughout different stages of the cell cycle allowing the cells to cope up with the infliction of DNA damage by various agents. Briefly these are the base excision repair, nucleotide excision repair, mismatch repair, homologous recombination and non-homologous adjoining. A few other specific lesions are also removed by direct chemical reversal and interstate crosslink repair. Double strand breaks are considered as the most toxic lesion. These DSBs are generated by various ways which is already known to you, the endogenous stresses or the exogenous factors. Besides these, DSBs may also arise through errors in DNA replication or as normal intermediates during programmed cellular processes such as meiosis or VDJ recombination which generates mature immunoglobulin or T cell receptor genes from the separate fragments of the germline genome. These DSBs can be programmed to trigger beneficial genomic rearrangement during meiotic differentiation or the establishment of the immune system. So, DSBs are kind of double edged sores, they are harmful on the one hand, but we can also exploit them in certain cases. Whenever there is a DNA breakage, particularly DSB, what are the strategies the cell uh, adopts to repair those DSBs? Without the repair of the DSBs, we have emphasized time and again that the survival of the cell will be at stake and it, if it survives at all, then it may lead to certain disease states. So, for the healthy existence of an organism, the DNA is re repaired whenever there is a occurrence of DSBs and this falls mainly into the following types. The one is the homologous recombination. In this strategy, the cell will undertake the repair of the DSB strand break uh, whereby in one chromatid the repair process takes place using the sister chromatid as a template. So, this is kind of a template dependent repair. The repair of breaks by homologous recombination therefore, is a high fidelity process as it ensures that all the genetic information at the break site is retained due to the presence of the template or the sister chromatid, chromatid uh, uh, during its repair. The other process by which DSBs are repaired are the non-homologous end joining method which involves the simple rejoining of the broken DNA ends regardless of the DNA sequence. This mechanism is error prone as small deletions may be introduced as at the break site. There is a third form 
which is similar to the second form and this is therefore known as the alternative form of NHEJ and is frequently abbreviated as ANSEJ, the A coming from the word alternative or simply as AEJ. So, these are the three main uh, DNA double strand break repair pathways. The first one is the homologous recombination, the second one is the NACJ, the third one is the AEJ or ANHEJ. So, these are various pathways through which uh, the DSBs are repaired and you can see in each pathway there are many protein molecules involved in every step. We will be discussing about the protein molecules that help us in repairing the DSBs following a certain pathway whether it is homologous recombination or NACG or ALT EJ. Now, from this diagram you can see whenever there is a double strength break, uh, the DNA is either repaired by homologous recombination or any of the other two pathways. Now, a DNA break is a DNA break. How does the cell identify or take decisions which pathway to follow for the repair of this particular uh, break over here, whether it will go the HR pathway or the other two pathways. So, in this case, the decision is taken by the involvement of certain players. Uh, for example, the DNA ends are bound by either MRN or KU7080 heterodimer as you can see in this picture. Binding and retention of MRN will shift repair towards HR and binding of the KU shifts repair towards NHEZ. So, these are the critical players which decide which pathway the DNA repair will follow. And there is a short range resection by mRNA, mRNA. Long range resection of the DNA and RPA binding. The RPA is exchanged for RAD51 which facilitates strand invasion, GNA thin synthesis and uh, repair, HR repair. Homologous recombination promotes pairing between identical or nearly identical DNA sequences and the subsequent exchange of genetic material between them. As the name homologous recombination suggests, there must be some kind of homology present between the two strands of DNA. That is why it involves nearly identical DNA sequences. Homologous recombination is termed as the guardian of genome integrity as it acts to repair DNA damage. Homologous recombination is found to be involved in rescue, rescuing of replication faults that are stalled for various reasons such as the missing factors or a particular difficulty upstream of the fork such as supercoiling or intense traffic of uh, proteins. Homologous recombination is a highly conjugate process uh, whether it is in bacteria or in humans. It serves to repair double strand breaks or single stranded gaps in the DNA. For example, in higher organisms there is a protein called RAT51 and its structure and functional homologue of the bacterial strand exchange uh, protein is the RAC protein in uh, bacteria. It is also a driving force for the evolution of multis in families. This is something very interesting. The HRA is contained, uh, uh, HRA is considered as a guardian of genome integrity. So, it guards the genome uh, at all times, but it is also a driving force for the evolution of multis in families at the same time. So, there is some kind of relaxation and escape uh, somewhere in between which is allowed. Without these, the diversity would not have happened. So, HR is a very, very interesting uh, phenomena which not only guards the genome on the one side, but it also allows uh, evolution to happen particularly in Maldives in families at the same time. HR plays a major role in evolution and genome dynamics by changing gene copy numbers through deletions, duplications and amplification. Intracomosomal recombination between ribosomal operands or between mobile elements scattered into the genome leads to 
deletion or tandem duplications of large regions within the, within the genome up to several hundred kilobases. The emerging technical application of homologous recombination today constitutes the basis of targeted gene replacement for gene therapy as well as for the precise design of engineered organism. In our course, we will be using this technique the, or depending on this technique to a large extent. The basic model for homologous recombination was largely derived from genetic studies in fungi such as Ustilago and Saccharomyces. Studies with the bacterium E. coli have provided us crucial biochemical insights into the mechanism of homologous recombination. In E. coli about 20 genes are found to be involved in homologous recombination. They produce specific proteins which carry out each of the key steps in the homologous recombination pathway. So, you can see in this diagram the various steps involved in homologous uh, recombination as well as alternative uh, recombination uh, repair pathways. So, let us examine the events uh, that occur whenever a, a DSB happens. So, once a double strand break occurs, one of the event that follows immediately is the resection. Most molecular models of homologous recombination describe the process in three key steps. The first one is the strand exchange uh, you can see over here, then the branch migration and finally the resolution. Strand exchange involves pairing of the broken DNA end with the homologous region of its sister chromatid followed by strand invasion to form a DNA crossover or holiday junction. This process generates regions of heteroduplex DNA comprising DNA strands from different sister chromatids. So, what happens is resection? First, there is a three, uh, 5 to 3 prime resection of the double strand break which produces DNA ends with 3 prime single stranded DNA tails. This is followed by strand invasion. The free 3 prime ends invade a homologous DNA duplex forming a DNA crossover or holiday junction and act as a primer to initiate new DNA synthesis. This is followed by branch migration where the holiday junction extends the region of heteroduplex away from the initial site of the crossover. During branch migration, the holiday junction is translocated along the DNA molecule extending the region of heteroduplex away from the initial crossover site. In the last step, the holiday junction intermediates is resolved by cleavage of the junction to form separate duplex DNA molecules again. The holiday junction resolution is therefore a very, very important step in this entire process. This is resolved by endonucleolytic cleavage of either the cross strands or non cross strands of the junction. Let us now discuss the molecular mechanisms involved in the repair of DSBs. You can see in this figure certain uh, proteins called RACBCD and then uh, RACA over here. We will discuss the role of these particular proteins in the repair mechanism one by one. DNA ends resulting from a double strand break is processed by a multifunctional enzyme complex called RACBCD. The RACBCD is a sequence regulated bipolar helicase nucleus that splits the duplex into its component strands and digests them until it encounters chi site which is a recombinatorial hotspot. The nucleus activity is then attenuated and RACBCD loads RACA into the 3 prime tail of the DNA. So, these are the critical steps. One thing we have to remember that this RAC BCD has two functions. One is it opens the DNA with its helicase activity. The next is its nuclease activity. The chi site is a short stretch of DNA in the genome of a bacterium near which 
homologous recombination is more likely to occur than on average across the genome. For this region, chi sites are also referred to as recombination hotspots. Chi sites serve as stimulators of DNA double strand break repair in bacteria and its sequence is unique to each group of closely related organisms. In enteric bacteria like E. coli and Salmonella, the core sequence for example is 5 prime ZCT, GZT, GG. In addition, it includes about 4 to 7 nucleotides to the 3 prime side of the core sequence which play important role. Let us examine the primary structure of the REC BCD enzyme. The total number of amino acid in each polypeptide uh, will be shown in the figure uh, which we are going to study in the next slide. This REC uh, B protein which is a component of the REC BCD enzyme is a modular protein or modular subunit. The N-terminal domain contains 7 motifs which is characteristics of SF1 helicases and these are involved in opening up of the DNA uh, double strand molecule. The C terminal domain contains motifs characteristics of a diverse family of nucleases. The nuclease motif contain key catalytic aspartate and uh, lysine residue. So, in this picture you can see the simplified diagram of the REC B protein which contains around 1180 amino acid residues and uh, all, as already told to you it is modular having two modules one having the helicase activity the other having the uh, nuclease activity. The N terminal domain contains the helicase function and it has seven characteristic SF1 motifs uh, as you can see here 1A, 1, 1A, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 total 7 motifs. The nuclease uh, activity lies in the C terminal domain and you can see here NUC motif which marks the position of the nucleus motif which contains key catalytic aspartan and lysine residues. The other two components of the REC BCD protein are REC C and REC D. So, in REC C there are around 1122 amino acid residues and these contains the important region called as the chi recognition site. The REC BCD protein has around 608 amino acid residues and it contains 7 conserved SF1 helicase motifs as in the case of REC B and you can see those in the yellow color strips in this diagram. So, we now know that REC B is a modular protein having helicase and nuclease activity, REC C is having the chi site and REC D is again having the helicase activity. All these three join together to form the REC BCD protein complex and in this you can clearly see that REC B and REC D which contains the helicase activity will be involved in opening the DNA double strands. This chi site is the place where uh, due to which the stoppage of this molecule will happen and a part of the REC B, the nucleus domain you can see lying over here uh, in, in this uh, position these are all schematic and uh, not, not, uh, not exact uh, locations. But you can see in this particular protein complex the different functional domains with respect to one another. Now, what are the different functions of these uh, different uh, constituent proteins? The REC C recognizes the chi sequence as already told to you. Once it recognizes the chi sequence, it signals REC D to stop not to go further. REC D will then stop and signals REC B to cleave the DNA. 
Rugby cleaves and continuous unwinding DNA and loads the rack A molecule. Let us look into the various steps where rack BCD catalyzes DNA and processing resection. So, there are various steps laid over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We will discuss these steps one by one. Rack BCD binds tightly to a blunt or nearly blunt DNA end of a linear DNA duplex. The Reg BCD couples the hydrolysis of ATP to DNA in the next step and the DNA translocation and unwinding due to the helicase activity takes place. The single stranded DNA products are cleaved asymmetrically with the degradation of the 3 prime terminated SS DNA tail being much more vigorous than the degradation of the complementary tail. In the next stage, the enzyme continues to translocate until it pauses as a correctly oriented chi sequence. At the chi sequence, the biochemical properties of the enzyme are altered dramatically. After chi recognition, REC BCD facilitates the loading of the REC A protein onto the 3 prime SS DNA. So, you can see the chi site here. So, once it arrives at the chi site, after that it will facilitate the loading of the REC A protein. After this, the enzyme continues to translocate, but the nucleus polarity is switched. The degradation of 3 prime SS DNA tail is attenuated, whereas the hydrolysis of the 5 prime SS DNA tail is upregulated. REC BCD then repeatedly deposits REC A promoters which act as nucleation points for filament growth primarily in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Following these, the REC BCD enzyme dissociates from the DNA. The product of the enzyme is a recombinogenic nucleoprotein complex of REC A protein bound to the 3 prime SS DNA tail with chi at its terminus. This product invades homologous duplex DNA to promote the recombinatorial repair of a DSB or to restart DNA replication. It has been found that the permanent inactivation of REC BCD enzyme by chi sites in duplex DNA occurs by the disassembly of the enzyme into its three constituent subunits. It is hypothesized that this inactivation occurs in two distinct steps. Number one, upon entering a chi sequence, REC BCD enzyme undergoes its first change. It retains its ability to travel along the DNA and cut a hairpin DNA structure at the distal end of the DNA, but loses its ability to nick at subsequently encountered chi sites on the same DNA molecule. The second change, the disassembly of the enzyme into three inactive subunits may occur either during continued unwinding beyond chi or upon reaching the end of the DNA molecule. Now, let us study a little bit about the RAC A protein which binds to the single stranded DNA and helps in the strand invasion. RAC A protein is about 350 amino acid residue long. Its sequence is highly conserved among eubacterial species. It is also found in the chloroplast of plants. Reiki like proteins are found in archaea and diverse eukaryotic organisms like fish and yeast, mouse or humans. The Reiki protein of E. coli has around 353 amino acid residues. The Reiki protein is involved in homologous recombination as already known to you and it bypasses mutagenic DNA lesions by the SOS response. Reiki protein catalyzes various reactions like the ATP driven homologous pairing and strand exchange of DNA molecules necessary for DNA recombinatorial repair. Then the hydrolysis of ATP in the presence of single stranded DNA molecules and ATP dependent uptake of single stranded DNA by duplex DNA and finally it catalyzes the ATP dependent hybridization of 
homologous single stranded DNAs. Let us now study about the various structural domains of RECA protein. You can see in this picture various domains which we have colored and these colors represent certain domains which we will be discussing one by one. RECA is composed of around 350 uh, amino acids and contains three major structural uh, domains. There is a central core ATPase domain or CAT domain which extends from the 34 to the 269 amino acid residue and here we are depicting these in the green color. Apart from these core ATPase domain, there are two other smaller domains, the N-terminal domain NTD and the C-terminal domain. So, we can divide this into three parts, the CAD, the NTD and the CTD. The NTD and CTD extends from the 1st to 33rd residues and from the 20, 270th to the 352nd amino acids respectively and shown here in the color red and yellow. Then there are various other uh, important features in this uh, particular protein. You can see uh, certain flexible region, there are two flexible regions, then there are two important sites called site 1 and uh, site 2, then you have a DSDNA gateway. Uh, we will uh, study about these various flexible regions as well as these MG2 binding sites and various site 1 and site 2 domains in our uh, next uh, uh, slides. Let us first focus on the ATPS core domain. Uh, it includes different sites. Number one is the ATP binding site between the residue 66 to 73. Then there is site 1 as you can see over here having the residues 157 to 216. This is a single strand binding single strand DNA binding site. Site 2 is double strand DNA binding site. So, this particular molecule can bind to single stranded DNA and double stranded DNA at the same time and for these it has specific sites site 1 for SSDNA binding and site 2 for DSDNA binding. It also includes residues responsible for the ATP hydrolysis activity. You can see this in the residues around 240 to 250 here, here into care. This C terminal domain can be divided into two domains, the DS DNA gateway domain between the residues 270 to 328 and the CTD tail between the residues 329 to 325 which modulates the protein activity. The MG2 plus binding is coordinated by D144 and the CTD tail as shown in this picture. Now, let us focus on the flexible regions, there are total 4 flexible regions of the protein and these are depicted by these violet boxes. So, these regions are the regions between residues 24 and 37 at the end of the N terminal domain and the beginning of the core binding domain. Then the next flexible region is L1, 157 and 1. 64 amino acid residue. The third one is the L2 or the loop 2 and this lies between 195 and 209 amino acid residues. The last one is the CTD which lies between 270 and 352 amino acid residues. So, we now know the various structural domains in a RACA protein 
which binds to uh, REC BCD which is being loaded into the single stranded DNA by REC BCD and then finally which drags the REC uh, single stranded uh, DNA into a uh, duplex DNA structure. How does it act? What are the mode of its activity? SSDNA and REC A along with its, with its cofactor ATP form an active right handed helical nucleoprotein filament with 6 REC A monomers per turn. These active nucleoprotein filament will search for and capture a homologous double stranded DNA to produce a synaptic structure. Once a region of homology is found, the single stranded DNA on the homologous chromosomes are exchanged producing heteroduplex DNA structure. The nucleoprotein filament has hydrolytic activity and this hydrolysis is carried out by the KR into KR hydrolysis motif which contain lysine 248 and 250 which cooperates with glue 96 on the other monomer. The single stranded DNA binds to site 1 of the protein forming a nucleoprotein filament. Then ATP a REC A cofactor binds to the ATP binding site and activates this filament. After that REC A performs a homology search to find a homologous double strand DNA. In this process double stranded DNA interacts first with the NTD and then with the CTD by which it can move to site 2 where it will bind to double stranded DNA. If the bound double stranded DNA is homologous to the single stranded DNA, strand exchange is performed, performed. if it is not the double stranded DNA is released. So, in many way this is some kind of a random uh, interaction uh, where it tries to do some matchmaking. If the matchmaking happens, the reaction will proceed forward. If the matchmaking fails due to the non availability of complementary sequences, the double stranded DNA will be released and the system will keep on trying. Let us now move to the homologous recombination in eukaryotes. Most of our studies, discussions we had till now are based on uh, prokaryotic uh, research. Uh, the process is similar in eukaryotes, but there are certain uh, players which are unique to the eukaryotic system. Here also resection takes place and the double stranded bricks are recognized by MRE 11, RED 50, NBS or MRE 11 complex. And the capture of DNAs by the mRNA complex will lead to the rapid activation of the ATM kinase which phosphorylates diverse substrate participation in DNA damage response. BRCA1 and P53 binding protein 1, 53 uh, BP here you can see this, they have opposing roles and influences the choice of homologous recombination over non-homologous end joining and potentially other mutagenic pathways of DSB repair. So, in the case of eukaryotic DSB repair, the involvement of BRCA and P53 are very important in the decision making whether it will go HR recombination pathway or other uh, recombination repair pathway. Apart from number 1 initiating the resection, BRCA1 also helps in the loading of the RAT51. Let us discuss about the loading of the RAT51 on SSDNA. So, earlier we were discussing about the loading of the RAC A uh, on the single stranded DNA and you already now know in details how that loading and strain invasion takes place as a result of that. So, here also for there will be loading of the RAT51 on the single stranded DNA and this complex will search for homology and 
health scene strand invasion. The 3 prime SSDNA stretch created by resection is coated with replication protein A and it protects it from digestion. You can see here the involvement of the RPA uh, proteins. The loading of RAD51 on the SSDNA is performed by the BRCA1 PAL B2 complex. Okay. So, you have the BRCA, uh, BRCA2 PAL B2 complex over here, uh, sorry not this one uh, here. So, this protein complex interacts with BRCA1 and catalyzes the replacement of RPA by RAD51 on the stretch of the 3 prime SSDNA creating the RAD51 SSDNA presynaptic complex. The SSDNA RAD51 filament scans the genome to search for homology and on success the filament invades the duplex homologous DNA and initiates strand exchange creating a displacement loop. So, you can see here the events taking place uh, sequentially. First, there is DSB recognition and resection and here are the essential factors for this particular step and these steps, uh, these are not essential in this stage. The second step is the strain invasion and D loop stabilization where BRCA1, BRCA2, PALB2, RAD51 and so many different players are critical for carrying the process forward while uh, these three molecules at the end are not essential uh, factors, non-essential factors. How DNA synthesis happens once the strain invasion is successful because it found out a homology sequence and the structure is now stabilized and DNA synthesis can take place. The DNA 3 prime invading strand will act like a primer. So, it will prime DNA synthesis through the recruitment of DNA and the copy of the invaded DNA molecule. Numerous polymerases are involved in this process although uh, delta polymerase has been proposed to play a primary role in this process. A protein complex HROB, MCM8, MCM9 and HELQ are proposed to have redundant helicase functions to promote DNA synthesis during this uh, homologous uh, recombination. Once the DNA synthesis starts and completed, the formation and resolution of the intermediates, HR intermediates uh, will have to take place. The strain invasion and DNA synthesis lead to the formation of different intermediates whose processing leads to gene conversion either associated with crossover products or not. The invading strand can be disassembled channeling DSB repair towards synthesis dependent strand alleling called SDSA. If stabilized, the D loop can lead to DSB repair by break induced repair or to the formation of double holiday junctions that can be either dissolved by the BLM top 3 ARM I1 by 2 complex or resolved by the structure specific resolves. This BLM is a RAC Q family DNA helicase. It is mutated in Bloom syndrome and plays several roles uh, sometimes which are uh, contradictory. For example, it has been shown to suppress crossovers in mitotic cells while repair mitotic DNA gaps by a homologous uh, recombination. BLM is involved in different steps of homologous recombination including N resection at HR initiation, D loop rejection and double holiday junction resolution at the HR termination. At resection initiation depending on the cell cycle phase that modifies its interacting partners, BLM favors the loading of 53 BP1 on the DSB in G1 phase preventing the initiation of unscheduled resection or in contrast favors resection in 
S phase when interacting with a top tree. Besides these players, there are several other accessory proteins which are required in the process. For example, we need RAT54 which is a member of the SWY2 oblique SNF2 protein family which are an ATP dependent chromatin remodelers. It interacts with RAT51 and in vitro studies have proposed that it functions as a RAT51 cofactor. RAT54 catalyzes the extension of joint molecules and stabilizes the D loop. A family of 6 proteins RAT51B, C, D, XRCC2, 3 and RAT51AP1 known as the RAT51 paralogs which are proteins that share sequence homology with RAT51 in a given species have been identified in mammals. Two distinct complexes have been identified RAT51B, C, D, XRCC2 and RAT51C, XRCC3. RAT51 paralogs favor the recruitment of RAT51 to DNA damage sites and promotes the formation and stabilization of the RAT51 nucleoprotein filament. The RAT51 paralogs also influence gene conversion track length. The SW SAP1 protein, a non canonical paralog of RAT51, forms the so called SHU complex when associated with SWS1. SHU interacts with the RAT51 and regulates its function. NHEZA. Let us discuss about the NHEZA pathway now. You already know how the homologous recombination pathway operates. Now we are going to discuss about the NHEZA pathway and the various players involved in it KU 70 by 80, then DNA PKCs and so on. The canonical non homologous end joining pathway depends on KU heterodimer and DNA PK catalytic subunit, which together form DNA PK holoenzyme. KU is the first responder at DSBs and provides a docking site for DNA PKCs. Without the presence of KU 7080 in the breakage site, DNA PKCs cannot be recruited to it. Unlike mRNA, which can bind internally, KU requires a free DNA and for binding and cannot associate with most block dense. Several nucleases, including tyrosyl DNA, phosphodiesterase 1 and 2, and Artemis, can remove hairpins, damaged bases of protein DNA adducts. The DNA ends are processed by additional enzymes and rejoined by the LIG4, XRCC4 and XLF complex. So, you can see here the various players like MRN, CTIP and Artemis etc. Let us now compare the enzymes present in prokaryotes and eukaryotes which carries out the non-homologous end joining process. So, here you have the prokaryotes and for the tooth pill protein, uh, you have the KU protein which is around 30 to 40 kilo delton and in eukaryotes, you have the KU 7080 uh, in Saccharomyces cerevisiae while uh, in multicellular eukaryotes also you have the similar kind of molecule. The polymerase action or the uh, carried out by the pole domain of the uh, L leak D. Here it is carried out by pole 4 in Saccharomyces cerevisiae and in higher eukaryotes, uh, pole mu and lambda are involved. The nucleus activity in prokaryotes is still not understood, although uh, many reports have suggested certain candidate uh, proteins. Uh, in eukaryotes, it is the red 50 MRE 11 XRS2 complex, while in multicellular organisms, it is the Artemis 
DNA PKCs. The kinase phosphatase activity lies in the P domain of uh, ligd in prokaryotes. Uh, in eukaryotes like Saccharomyces cerevisiae it lies in TPP1 and others and in multicellular organisms it is present in the P and K. The ligase activity in prokaryotes again lies in the LIG domain of LIG2. In eukaryotes like Saccharomyces it lies in the NAG1, LIF1 and DNLF4 while in multicellular organisms it lies in XLF, XSCC4, DNA ligase 4. So, from this comparison we can see the diversity of the protein molecules and players which are involved in prokaryotes and also within eukaryotes, lower eukaryotes and higher eukaryotes have different uh, proteins uh, which carry out certain defined functions in the NSEJ pathway. The KU is a critical player without which the NSEJ repair cannot begin. This is abundant and highly conserved DNA binding protein found in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes and it plays essential role in the maintenance of the genome integrity. In eukaryotes KU is a heterodimer comprised of two subunits KU70 and KU80 and it is best characterized for its central role as the initial DNA and binding factor in the classical non-homologous and joining pathway. The main DNA double strand break repair pathway in mammals. KU binds the double stranded DNA ends with high affinity in a sequence independent manner through a central ring formed by the interwind strands of the KU70 and KU80 subunits. At the break KU directly and indirectly interacts with several CNHEs effectors and processing enzymes serving as the scaffold for the entire DNA repair complex. What are the general steps of non-homologous DNA and joining? It starts with the binding of KU to the DNA ends at the DSB and it improves the binding by nucleases, polymerases and ligase components thereupon. Flexibility in the loading of these enzymatic components, the option to load repeatedly and independently processing of the two DNA ends all permit mechanistic flexibility to the NSEJ process. This mechanistic flexibility is essential to permit NSEJ to handle a very diverse array of DSB and configurations and to join them. In addition to the overall mechanistic flexibility, each component exhibits enzymatic flexibility and multifunctionality. So, now you know about the homologous recombination and non-homologous recombination uh, repair pathway. In addition to these conventional NSEJ and homologous recombination repair, there is a third pathway of double strand break repair which we call as ALT-EJ or ANH-EJ. It is functioning on simple end joining principles but repairing DSB in a slower speed than conventional NSEJ. This repair pathway is considered to be an alternative form of the NSEJ as already told to you and is abbreviated as ANHEJ. ANHEJ or BNSEJ. A NHEJ or AEJ is supposed suppressed by C NHEJ. The conventional NSEJ will uh, not allow the alternative NSEJ to operate and it is also possibly suppressed by homologous recombination repair pathway. It is the least preferred pathway uh, because of the suppression by the other two pathways and it becomes active only when the standard repair processes fail. The CNHEJ and HRR fails to take care of the genome integrity. Under that circumstances only alternative NACJ will come into action and this repair may take place at the local level to the global level. For this reason, this is considered as a backup pathway. 
if conventional NACZ and HRRA fails, then alternative NACZ comes into action as a backup uh, mechanism. So, for this reason, it is also sometimes referred to be called as BNHEZ by certain groups of people. So, several factors have been implicated in alternative NACJ and the functional diversity has led to the postulation that there are several sub pathways in this operation. It is not just one single uh, pathway and it engages prospectively at each double strand break on the basis of as yet undefined parameters in competition with other uh, repair pathways. So, although it is the last one to operate when the first two fails, the entire landscape of its operation and mechanism is still largely unexplored. So, this AEZ will engage at DSBs as already told to you when either of the two pathways have somehow failed to act. Thus, at each DSB where A is A engages, factors of either C and H is A or HRA, HRR particularly those involved in early steps will be present when this alternative NACZ takes DSB processing over. So, C and H is A and HRR tried to repair the DNA. So, those players are present but they fail to do it, then this process is taken over by alternative pathway. So, in the alternative pathway, we will always find the presence of the initial players involved in the earlier two processes. Also, it is possible and even likely that these factors have already operated at the DNA ends. So, resection has taken place and it has carried out one or more of the initial steps of the CNHEZ and HRR which of course alters the state of the substrate presented to the alternative NACJ. Furthermore, the presence of the CNHEZ and HR factors at the DNA ends may either facilitate or compromise the operation of A, in A alternative NACJ. When the engagement of this alternative EJ follows failure of CNACJ, several of the early CNACJ factors are present as already told to you. But the process must be abrogated prior to the ligation of the leak 4. And ligation is carried out with either of the remaining ligases, uh, ligase 3 and ligase 1. PARP 1 is a sensor for DNA discontinuities, originally shown to operate in base excision and single strand break repair. Previous work have implicated PARP 1 in the repair of these alternative EJ. There is even evidence for competition between KU and PARP1 for DSBs raising the possibility that pre-existing conventional NACs factors at the DSB compromise the alternative EJ pathway. DNA stand and stabilization provided by the conventional NACs by KU may be provided in alternative EJ by histone H1. However, it should be emphasized that to date the evidence for a role of histone in alternative EZ is of POD biochemical nature. This alternative EZ is considered to be a mechanistically distinct pathway and it is shown to be active throughout the cell cycle. It is markedly enhanced in the G2 phase as compared to the G1 phase and is compromised in stationary phase cells tested either in the G1 or G2 phase of the cell cycle. There are speculations that the latter responses may be regulated by phosphorylation of BRCA1 at S988 through CHK2 where it in its phosphorylated form BRCA1 promotes error free NSEJ and suppresses the mutagenic alternative EJ. Therewith it reduces the size of deletions at the breakpoint junctions. However, this dependency is more likely in G2 than in G1 cells as BRCA1 CTIP and MRN reinitiates DSB resection during SG2 phases and therefore alternative mechanisms uh, should be explored. There are certain parameters which have positive effects on the alternative EJ and there are certain others which have negative impacts on them. The positive ones are microhomologies, the presence of ligases 1 and 3, histone H1, PARP1, 
BRCA1, CTIP, MRN and WRN and we have discussed about the involvement or presence of these uh, factors in, in the alternative EJ. There are other factors like the uh, uh, P53 or 53 BP1, H2 AX, PARP2, KU, uh, DNA ligase, etc., are reported to have negative effects. So, finally, let us once again visit the two main DNA repair pathway, especially for DSBs. Uh, we have the canonical or conventional NHEJ repair pathway and the homologous repair pathway, you now know what are the protein molecules involved in taking the decision which pathway uh, it will follow. And you know that KU is an important player in NSEJ and in HR you have a different set of important critical players and the formation of certain uh, invading strands takes place in the homologous recombination. In brief, in the homologous end joining starts with the recognition of the DNA strand by the KU7080 heterodimer which recreates the DNA PKCs. If the ends are incompatible, nucleases such as Artemis can trim the ends. The XRCC4 DNA ligase 4 XLF ligation complex will seal the break in this process. In homologous recombination, the MRN CTIP complex starts resection on the breaks to generate single stranded DNA. After resection of the breaks, it can no longer be repaired by NSEJ and it has to follow the HR pathway. The SSDNA is first coated by RPA which is subsequently replaced by RAD51 with the help of BRCA2. These RAD51 nucleoprotein filaments mediate strain invasion on the homologous template. Extension of the D loop and the capture of the second end lead will lead to and will lead to repair. Thank you.